Okay, this sermon is entitled, Learn to Do Well. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 65 reads, Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Sion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Now, there's a myth out there that is basically in the circles or the, the realm of false Christianity that basically posits that once a person is saved, then they automatically just change. And it's kind of like sort of a a progressive betterment. They just keep getting better and better in a piecemeal fashion. And there's lots of different verbiage that people use to try to back this teaching up. They would say stuff like, once you're saved, you're a new creature, or you're born again. And these things are true, but see, they're misdefining what this means. And you'll hear people say stuff like, the Holy Spirit is now doing a transforming work in your life. And a lot of these people are, are just unsaved, they're lost. They'll just come right out of the gate and say stuff like, well, you have to turn from your sins to become saved. Then I've heard some people say, well, you don't have to repent as part of salvation, but if you are truly saved, you will repent. It's like you have some type of a new nature or some type of a new um, predisposition to just start living right. And this is all a bunch of garbage. Every single last bit of this this stuff that's being taught is 100% false. There's no such thing as a transforming work in your life that comes automatic with salvation. Now, yes, you can get transformed. And that's why the Bible tells us that we need to learn how to do well. Okay? It doesn't just come naturally. In fact, if you reject God's word, you will actually get worse and worse. And I'm going to look look at a couple verses that prove that. So I'm not preaching against this idea of being a better person or living for God or turning away from sins or being transformed. I'm just I'm preaching against all that garbage the way most people are presenting it by saying that it just automatically happens and that it will happen or you're not really saved or all, and all this garbage. No, the truth behind it all is that it's our responsibility to get into the Bible and to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and to change us, and that's how it works. Now, let's take a look at some verses and make it very clear that it's God who, who, who does this. Turn over to Isaiah chapter 1. Let's take a look at verse 2, and it reads, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. So right there, we see that God is commanding people to listen to his word. And how, how do we do that? We do it by reading his word. Okay, now... Let's take a look at verse 17. It tells us, Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. So we see right here that doing well is learned, it's taught, and it has to be something that people are being disciplined in doing. And it doesn't come automatically, as I've already after stated, and that's why it's so important that we, we get into the Word of God and start learning it. Now, even with children, they need to be taught the Bible as well. Now, turn back to Proverbs chapter 22, and look at verse 6, and it reads, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, a lot of people are wondering why children become so seditious, and so rebellious, and so recalcitrant. The main reason is because they're not being trained up to go the right way, okay? That's why they rebel when they hit a certain age. So the Bible tells us right there that we need to be you know, training our children up. Otherwise, they will turn out to be very wicked and very unruly and wayward. Now, let's take a look at a verse that makes it clear that people will get worse and worse. They will wax evil if they are not reading the Bible. And this is a fact, and this is why this teaching that, that says that if you're truly saved, you'll automatically change, and, and then the Holy Spirit's working on, on your life and all this... And they say it automatically. It just just happens. The reason why this is such a, a wicked teaching is because it doesn't automatically happen, and you're actually causing people to be living in delusionality and b- to believe something that's just not happening. It's like some type of prosperity teaching. If you do this, you know, you'll have all this prosperity and riches, when it, and it never comes. If a person's not in the Word of God every day, and they're not soaking it up and sponging it up and allowing it to just permeate you know, their mind and and their soul, you could say, they will not change, okay? And it's a lie to sit there and tell people that, well, you're, you're just automatically going to change. No, it's not automatic. That's why it's commanded. 
So let's turn back to Jeremiah chapter number 6. Now, this teaching out there, it causes people to be biblically neglectful. They neglect the Bible because they're waiting for this miraculous you know, phenomenon to happen. It never happens. And see, what happens with a lot of people is they mistake this type of thing for just morality. And morality can come to anybody. It doesn't matter. But see, you're not going to have spirituality. You're not going to be you know, going down the right path, necessarily, until you get into the Word of God and allow it to change you. And we see an example of what happens when people do not read the Bible, and they reject God's Word. Jeremiah chapter 6, and look at verse 19. It says here, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. God will bring evil upon you, and even in your thoughts, if you reject his words. Now, why is that? Because his words are pure, and his words are holy, and it's, this is the only way to clean up your life. It's through the Bible, through reading the Bible, on a daily basis. And a lot of people, because of spiritual blindness, or because of stupidity, don't realize this. They don't realize that the Bible has this type of an effect on people. Now, turn over to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, it tells us why God's Word has this effect. And see, we've seen it a, a hundred times. People will act like they're allergic to the Bible. Like they're getting ready to go into anaphylactic shock if you open it up. And I've heard people say, oh, you got the Bible? I'm getting out of here. I heard this one guy say that. And, and the reason why is because the person's wicked. This guy was lost, by the way, and the Bible is pure. So that's why the two don't mix, okay? There's no coalescence between wicked people and God's word. And we see this in Romans 1, in verse 2. Let me start with verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the, the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures. The words in the Bible are, are pure and holy. That's why wicked, unsaved people a lot of times don't want anything to do with God or the Bible because it's the exact opposite of them. So we need to start learning how to do well instead of just being carnal and being worldly. Let's look at one more verse, then I'll close. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and it says in verse 11, let's back it up to verse 10, And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Okay, and then verse 11 reads, And that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. So he's telling us right here, the Apostle Paul tells us that in order to be quiet, you have to study God's Word. That's why a lot of times when you're in the presence of a bunch of very worldly and carnal and wicked people, it seems like they're addicted to noise. Like they just had to be surrounded by a bunch of sonic cacophony all the time. The TV sets, you know, all the way up, okay? They have the radio going. They might have two or three noise-making electronic devices going on simultaneously. And it's funny how these people just, just love this type of acoustic commotion and chaos. But it's wicked, and that's why it says we need to study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. So like I said, doing well or living for God is not automatic, and it takes learning, it takes dedication, it takes preparation, and the main thing it takes is sanctification through reading the Bible and through learning God's Word. Okay, the Bible says in John 15, I'll close with that, it says in verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. We're talking about a spiritual cleanliness. Okay, that's how you get clean. You know, it's through the word. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.